All right. Awesome. Well, welcome in tonight, everybody. Um, we'll give a couple of a quick minute here, a couple of minutes here for people to get settled in. Um, just some quick reminders for the webinar functions, of course, as, as most of us are familiar with. Um, if anybody has questions that they want to, <clears throat> excuse me, submit um, along the way, please use that Q&A function down towards the bottom of the screen. Um, otherwise, webinar, you know, anyone attending doesn't have to worry about camera on or, or being on audio or anything like that. Um, we have some slides that are prepared tonight that's going to help us learn about the program here at PLU, um, the Dooley Reengineering Program, and a few awesome folks from our department as well as one of our current students um, that can help share their stories and give us some insight um, into, into this awesome opportunity. So we give uh, just a couple more moments here, and then we will, for time's sake, be able to to get started uh, and keep us to that that a uh, you know forty five minute or so timeline. Great. All right, Joe. Well, again, just to be respectful of time, we'll go ahead and jump in and get started. Um, just to do a quick introduction of myself, I'm Brady. I'm one of the associate directors of admission at PLU. Um, my role tonight is to kind of just be a facilitator, almost even a fly on the wall, um, but allow our our faculty and students to, to be able to talk about the program itself and then hear more from them since they are the experts. Um, so I'm going to hand it over. Uh, we did not talk about a uh, introduction order <laughs> to this point, um, but we'll go ahead and have introductions. If you all could talk about, obviously, name, um, how long have you been at PLU or, or Drew for yourself, what year you are at PLU right now, um, maybe why the engineering program, if it's a if it's a quick why, uh, and then jump into, jump into the slides. So I'll hand it over to you all, okay? Cool, yeah, I'll go ahead and start. So uh, I am uh, Dr. Brett Underwood. I'm in the physics, uh, chair of the physics department, um, which is where the engineering program, uh, the dual degree engineering program is housed here at PLU. Uh, and I've been at PLU, I think, 12 years or something like this. Um, and, um, well, well, we'll talk about the why in just a little bit. So I'm going to leave that one hanging. Um, and then I'll let uh, Bogo uh, introduce himself next. Hi, um, I'm Bogo Gerganov, and I'm director of the dual degree engineering. Um, I'm also in the physics department and been at PLU for about a little over 15 years. Um, sure. Hi, I'm Drew Sims. I'm one of the dual degree engineering students here at PLU. Um, and one of my YPLUs is small class sizes and just getting to know faculty. It's, it's really nice. Perfect. Cool. So uh, we had a couple slides just of the overall um, kind of overview of the program. Uh, just to give a sense of what the program's about. So the idea of the PLU dual degree program is you would get two degrees. You'd get a PLU degree and you'd get an engineering degree from one of our engineering partners. Uh, so the this is really great because um, you spend three years at PLU. And so you'd get, uh, there's two different uh, degrees you could get at PLU. You could get a BA in physics or a BA in chemistry, depending on whether you want the physics or the chemistry track. And then at the engineering partner, um, you would get uh, the engineering degree in the subdiscipline of your choice. And so this could be biomedical, chemical engineering, could be something like civil engineering, uh, electrical engineering, mechanical, any of those things that, uh, that our partners offer, um, then uh, you could get a degree in that area um, uh, is the idea. And so then you'd walk out with two degrees in uh, what is approximately five years, uh, three years at PLU, uh, and then two years at the engineering partner. Our affiliated schools at PLU are Columbia University in New York City and Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, and so these are absolutely top notch uh, university or engineering uh, universities um, and uh, are, are wonderful opportunities. So I'll, I'll hand it to uh, Bogo for talking about the program requirements. 
All right, so um, the program requirements involve the various courses that uh, you need to take in order to get those two degrees. Uh, and I'll focus on the POU sides. Uh, and um, of course, we also have the detailed requirements of the engineering schools when it comes to getting an uh, engineering degree in particular specialty. Uh, but here at POU, uh, you'll be asked to uh, take uh, various foundation, as we call them, foundational courses uh, for engineering or pre-engineering foundational courses, uh, which involve three semesters of calculus, um, two semesters of general physics with labs, two semesters of general chemistry uh, with labs included, uh, one semester of computer science, uh, intro to engineering. And so these are the foundational requirements. And then Columbia in particular also requires um, intro to economics and linear algebra. Um, then in addition to the foundational coursework to get uh, the actual uh, physics or chemistry degree, BA in physics or BA in chemistry, in physics, we require 12 additional credit hours, which means three courses uh, from a list of electives. So these are second year and upper division third and four year courses in physics or engineering. And there is a flexibility there to choose coursework which is relevant to the intended engineering specialty. Like you take some courses for mechanical engineering and other courses if you intend to do electrical engineering, etc. Uh, the chemistry track has a little bit uh, more requirements, 19 credit hours. So this is like four and a half courses. That's because labs are included, uh, uh, the kind of odd hours. But so those involve, uh, in addition to general chemistry, also organic chemistry and physical chemistry. And then um, to get the POU degree, you also need to complete the POU general university requirements. There, is, there are requirements also for certain cumulative GPA in science and math and engineering courses, as well as overall GPA. Uh, and those are 3.3 for Columbia and 3.25 uh, for uh, Wash U. Uh, now, these are uh, suggested uh, requirements, so they're not absolute, but... Uh, you want to be around that uh, threshold in order to have a good chance of being successful in applying to those engineering partners. Students who have passed those thresholds uh, usually, in most cases, uh, get accepted to those schools. Uh, cool. Oh, sorry, were you done? Um, so uh, why dual degree engineering? So this is uh, not a simple question because many students ask, well, why don't I just go to study engineering uh, to a big school which has an engineering program? And that's certainly a possibility. However, there are certain advantages to do it the dual degree way. Um, and so uh, this, this doesn't come from us. This is the feedback of the alumni of our program and the alumni of the, our engineering partner schools. All of them uh, are telling us that students who come through the dual degree engineering track are much more successful in their careers, much more likely to get promoted to managerial positions, to have a faster career growth. Uh, and that's because uh, uh, in addition to the engineering skills, uh, to the hardcore, uh, hard, uh, hard skills, which involve math, engineering, physics, et cetera, they also have um, the soft skills, which allow them to be very effective in communicating with um, other professionals, um, seeing the broader picture of why engineering is important uh, to humanity and to our society. And so uh, uh, basically practicing socially connected engineering um, uh, in, their, in their profession. Now, in addition, uh, they have the benefit of taking foundational classes at the small liberal arts institutions. <laughs> Uh, get to know the professors, as Drew said, because what happens at big schools, at the lower level, students usually get, uh, well, have to take the so-called weed-out courses, which means that you'll get plugged in a 
group of uh, 100, maybe more students, maybe 200 students. Uh, and then uh, you, nobody's gonna uh, pay individual attention to you. Um, a lot of the teaching will be done by teaching assistants, which could happen to be good or not so good. And then uh, you'll have to do well on hard exams, which you may or may not be well prepared for, depending on uh, basically how how you your learning in that course goes. But the professor is not likely to have the their their eye on you, you know how you're doing, and so. Because of that, uh, students are much more successful when they come to the dual degree engineering track. And when they get into the engineering school, to the upper division engineering courses, they're also much more successful in them than students who come from the traditional track, if they even make it to the upper division engineering courses. So that's why um, dual degree, it's a longer answer, but again, uh, it doesn't come from us, but mainly from our partner schools. They tell us that students who go through this track are more successful, have much higher graduation rate at the engineering school, uh, et cetera. This, uh, this picture is also one thing that is um, particular about PLU and maybe a reason why um, uh, PLU is special. So the, the person wielding the hammer in this picture is actually me. Um, and then the person uh, on the bed of nails that I'm slamming the hammer on um, was my colleague, uh, Rich Lee, who's my department chair at the time. I was an untenured professor when I was doing this. Um, but the point is that uh, we we know each other and we trust each other. Um, and so we're, we're all good friends uh, in the department. And that's something special about um, PLU. And so like, what is what is it about PLU that's special? Well, I can tell you um, that in our classes, our intro classes and our upper division classes, they're interactive uh, and they're small. So you get to know your faculty member, you get to do things. Um, you're actually actively engaged rather than sitting in a very large lecture hall, um, listening to, uh, listening to the, the material and just copying it down. And so uh, some of these pictures are from classes that we've taught as part of the dual degree program where uh, in the students are up working at whiteboards, working in groups, learning those collaborative problem solving skills. Um, and uh, I don't know that we've had much more than 15 students in an upper division class. And uh, right now our intro physics classes are definitely uh, not above 30. And so uh, again, I know everybody in my uh, intro physics class right now, absolutely. And I know them well enough to, that we've been worked together for quite a while now. Um, and so that's one benefit of being at PLU is that you have that, uh, the small classes. Um, but then you still get to go to the engineering school for the engineering degree. Um, related to that, you actually get to know your professors. I was kind of um, uh, mentioning that already. So here are some students who uh, were, I think, originally part of an engineering or interested in, in uh, engineering and went on for applied physics, which is um, the, uh, the sort of engineering track that, that you can get for a Bachelor of Science here at PLU. Um, and so these students did research with our professors um, and they were learning about how to operate the PLU observatory. And so again, you get to know and work with faculty. Um, and so the in fact, um, Justin Amatos on the, on the right on this picture are, is still working with Dr. Hay in this picture um, on some research that they're doing for uh, investigating um, some of Saturn's moons. Uh, so they're, they're, still, they're still collaborating even beyond the time that uh, Justin has graduated. Um, some other reasons why PLU is special. Actually, this is really something um, unique about PLU. We have uh, a fair number of upper division engineering courses in our program that you can take and that transfer into upper division courses at our partner schools. So in addition to say uh, introduction to engineering um, that you would take as part of the program, you can take upper level courses like engineering thermodynamics or engineering statics. Um, those two courses are really important because you can take them here at PLU uh, in the small classes. And then when you get to a partner like Columbia or Washington University in St. Louis, you don't have to take them in the bigger classes, uh, again, where maybe they're, they're looking to um, uh, reduce the numbers of, uh, of uh, engineering uh, upper division uh, students. Um, here, you, you could take them in, uh, in a smaller class. Um, circuits is another great one that we have at PLU, uh, where you get that individual hands-on attention. 
Um, and so these direct transfer engineering courses, uh, again, is something special that we have at PLU. We have a really robust and strong program. Um, so the main idea on why PLU is that you get the best of both worlds. You get the student-centered experience of a small school, of a small liberal arts school uh, with small classes and faculty that you get to know. But then you also get to uh, take a engineering degree at one of the bigger schools. So when you get to the upper division courses, you're getting into those more technical details you can go to uh, a world-class institution like Columbia University or Washington University at St. Louis. Uh, and so really you're getting the best of both of those in, uh, in doing the PLU dual degree program. Um, okay, so on this picture um, is Michelle Anderson, one of our uh, recent graduates who went on um, to go to WashU, Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, so uh, she was uh, a very exceptional student here at POU, and she went on to be equally exceptional at Washington University in, of St. Louis. Uh, she actually won... Um, a uh, fellowship, which uh, the uh, the Brown Fellowship, which completely covered her tuition at WashU. So there are, uh, uh, this is a national uh, fellowship which WashU awards to one student uh, nationwide every year. Uh, so uh, and they have, I think, about uh, certainly over fifty affiliate schools like POU. You know, probably close to a hundred. Uh, but POU or POU student rather has won this fellowship uh, three times in the last uh, 12 years since Brad's been here. So every three or four years on the average, a POU student wins this fellowship, which is one in the nation. Uh, one of our dual degree engineering students gets awarded this uh, uh, fellowship to study at WashU completely for free. And talking about that, uh, WashU also has, uh, uh, and Columbia as well, they also have their financial aid packages, uh, their discounts, uh, many of them special to the dual degree engineering program, which make the education there also less expensive than it would otherwise be at those top-notch schools, uh, as uh, Brad put it. Oops, sorry. There we go. No. So here is some statistics, um, approximately 40 graduates of dual degree engineering over the last 10 years. So uh, we send on the average, yeah, between four and six, let's say five average or four every year to um, uh, WashU um, and Columbia. And by the way, most of our uh, students get accepted to both places. So they have to then figure out where to go. <laughs> Not an easy choice, but... Uh, one that you want to uh, have. Uh, also, over the last 30 years, nearly 100% of uh, our students graduate from those schools. Like once there, they they finish their programs, they, they do graduate. There are very few exceptions to that. Um, now, um, Brett mentioned earlier that uh, any ABET affiliated engineering school could work with the POU dual degree engineering program. Columbia University and Washington University in St. Louis are our affiliate schools, which means that we have contractual agreements with them and the application process is specially facilitated. Um, uh, so students don't go through the general admission process. There is just like special, very uh, streamlined uh, and simplified process for them to apply. However, um, our students sometimes choose to apply as transfer students to other engineering schools, um, in which cases, if they, they are ABET accredited, POU does offer its part of the deal. In other words, we do give students, we award students our uh, degree, uh, BA in physics or BA in chemistry. Um, and students have gone mainly to state schools uh, to their local state, like uh, many from Washington have gone to Washington State University in Pullman. Uh, students from Hawaii have gone to University of Hawaii at Manoa, Oregon State University, Boise State University, uh, Eastern Washington University, 
University of uh, Colorado School of Mines, Montana State University, um, and University of Southern California are some of the other schools that students have gone to. In terms of work, um, we don't hear where all of our uh, graduates go because they go to the engineering schools first, but we do know of people who have gone to Boeing, uh, General Electric, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, uh, top companies or organizations after they obtain their dual degree. Um, so uh, now uh, we're going to talk about the related programs and there are a few of those. So uh, there is um, a degree in applied physics, which is closely related to the engineering program in the sense that it shares many of the core courses and the elective courses as well. So those include the intro physics, intro to engineering, um, obviously the uh, mathematical foundation, um, then engineering material science, modern physics, uh, many of the elective courses, the upper division courses, like engineering statics, uh, engineering thermodynamics and circuits, and even the ones that are not circled, I must say, uh, those courses are requirement for BS in applied physics, electricity and magnetism, electromagnetic waves, classical, classical mechanics. Those courses, many of them are also available to dual degree engineering students and are also directly transferable to uh, WashU, like electricity and magnetism, for instance, or classical mechanics are two very good examples. Uh, and the fact that we have these direct transfer agreements also makes it much easier for our students to graduate from the engineering school because the course load there uh, is very high. And if they can take some of the courses here at POU, they would have easier uh, time at the engineering school. Um, another related program, um, uh, now this is on the other end, like dual degree engineering is a degree we offer jointly with other universities. BS in applied physics is a degree which is offered entirely here. Uh, and the other one, a new one that we've started is the engineering industry minor, which in a sense is the minor for this major. And so that, um, involves some of the um, engineering courses like Introduction to Engineering, uh, and then all the courses that have ENGR designation like Engineering Statics, Engineering Thermodynamics, Circuits, those elective courses, um, Introphysics. Uh, but uh, in addition to that, there is a internship component of this course, of this of this program, which uh, we would give, cre we give credit for students getting an internship um, in engineering or related field, um, or alternatively for taking courses which relate to engineering ethics or engineering policy. So these are courses in our um, liberal arts, uh, College of Liberal Arts uh, in philosophy, um, economics, ethics, religion, all, um, all of these. Um, fields. Uh, I must say that this is uh, getting a BS in applied physics in particular is also a path to engineering as many of our graduates have gone to graduate programs in engineering like master's or PhD programs in engineering after having a degree in applied physics. So with that, that's the brief overview of the program itself. Um, and so uh, this is an opportunity for questions. Um, and then uh, I, if there are, uh, as there are questions come up, we can also hear about Drew's experience as well. Yeah, thank you all for that <clears throat> information. There's a lot that goes into it, but it's uh, it's good to have it laid out, you know, as, as straightforward as it can be. Um, I do know one of the questions that was posed initially revolved around the potential of double majoring or minoring and how that works with the dual degree engineering program. Um, yes, we just kind of talked about the, you know, engineering industry minor. Um, can you all speak a little bit more? Is it possible to do a double major of sorts? Um, are there other minors maybe that you see students wanting to pursue or, or attempting to pursue that are in the, are on the dual degree engineering path? Um, 
if there's anything you can shed light into those areas. Go ahead, Bogo. I think you probably have a good sense of this. Yeah, well, one, uh, the immediate example is minor in mathematics. So um, essentially all of our um, dual degree engineering majors get them also minor in mathematics. And that's simply because of the uh, foundational engineering requirements. They're required to take uh, a course in differential equations, a course in uh, multivariable calculus, and a course in linear algebra. And that combination of courses does give them automatically a minor in mathematics. So that's in addition to the dual degree in, let's say, physics and then engineering from the engineering school. Um, other students have uh, double majored in things like uh, computer science sometimes, in addition to the BA in physics. Um, that sometimes requires them to stay for longer than three years here, like maybe four years, but even in three years, uh, it's doable, although it has to be, um, it, there are a lot of courses involved. Um, also, I must say that the dual degree engineering program is not limited to those two degrees, BA in physics, BA in chemistry, actually a student can get a degree in anything at POU and still satisfy the dual degree engineering requirement. And that has been something that students have pursued. And that's how uh, the double majors have happened mostly in our experience. Okay. Is it just typical for students, um, the most popular ones would be the, the BA in physics or the BA in chemistry? Um, but as you mentioned, you could actually pursue anything for the bachelor's level? Yeah, well, you can, but of course, it's difficult to do in three years. So the BA in physics and BA in chemistry have simplified or reduced requirements. They don't have capstone requirements at POU, for instance because the idea is that students do a capstone at the engineering school. And so this way they can get it done in three years. Um, other majors, which are not subject to this special, um, um, special design will have to basically satisfy all the requirements, including capstone. And that in addition to the engineering requirements is absolutely doable in four years, but not always in three years. But that's what I would say about this. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, well, since we have Drew in the room, I think uh, to hear about his experience a little bit. Um, Drew, could you, you know, talk about a little bit of your experience so far within the, the dual degree program? What are you pursuing right now? Um, and what year are you, you know, how far along in the program um, are you at this point? Um, yeah, of course. Um, I am a second year in the program, and I am planning on pursuing my Bachelor of Arts in Physics through the program. I'm also plan I'm pursuing a minor in mathematics as well, like Bogo had mentioned. Pretty much everybody I know who's doing the program is pursuing a math minor. They'll send you an email if you don't have the math minor, the math department. Um, I'm also planning on doing a computer science minor. Um, just because I'm also the engineering I'm planning on pursuing is electrical engineering and it has a lot of good overlap. Um, my experience with the program going into PLU, I actually had no intention of pursuing engineering, but um, as soon as I got here, um, I realized I probably want like to check out engineering and um, I signed up for the program and I would say a really nice thing about it is the flexibility. If I, my plan before pursuing engineering was physics and a lot of the classes you'll be taking at the beginning of pursuing a physics degree coincide with um, the engineering degree. I know a lot of people who came to PLU planning to pursue the engineering dual degree program and have switched to applied physics. But the nice thing about it is that either way, you have that you there is some flexibility to go between the two of them and not know completely what you want to do going into it but in the end either getting 
a degree in physics or engineering and yeah and also small class sizes and like you are taking a lot of classes with the same people and there's like a camaraderie of like you all went through the same math track or physics track and taking all the same classes together it's it's very nice yeah no that's awesome to hear um and even the fact that you said like you said you didn't necessarily intend on going this path when you had first you know um excuse me chosen to enroll at plu and, and become a student there but have found your way into that uh but it does make sense and it's nice to know that there are those smaller communities within you know with your your physics um coursework um your math coursework obviously and then being able to jump into maybe even a computer science minor so that is that is pretty nice to know um let's see do you have a question from one of our students is it possible for dual degree engineering students to study abroad i heard many students at plu study away potentially for a semester or two um what is that possibility for folks that are hoping to to complete the dual degree I'll go. Uh, I, I, I can take this. Um, so uh, that would depend. It's possible. Um, it's not super easy because of the compressed nature of the uh, dual degree program. However, it's certainly possible. And um, uh, especially, let's say, with IHON students, students who are IHON, there is a program at Oxford. Um, and um, we've seen in our experience that uh, that program is flexible and we can, uh, students who go to Oxford can choose what courses to take and we can take the, we can tell them what they basically need to take there in order to stay on track. And uh, Oxford has, in, within this program, uh, POU hires some uh, lecturers at Oxford or graduate students, junior lecturers or graduate students at Oxford who basically teach those courses that our students need at the level our students need them and that is successful. Now, it is more difficult if a student goes to just uh, a generic country and gets plugged into a generic university to satisfy the exact requirements that we have them satisfied. Uh, and, you know, that's still an amazing experience as they could take courses which are offered there, but that would likely delay the program a little bit. So, you know, uh, extend the length of the program if they are to go to just some um, random place where we have no control over what exactly they're going to study and how. But it's definitely possible. With some work, it can happen. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe if, if someone was trying to get done in that three-year timeline, they would definitely want to go and um, attempt to get into like the Oxford program as an example versus if they did decide, hey, I'm going to go you know, apply for any other study away program, I can kind of expect that might be here an extra semester or or two, um, but still ultimately wrap up their program or just alter the timeline. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Um that's a, that's really good to know because uh, I do get that that question a lot for these students. Um, they see three years and they're like, "Well, how am I supposed to get things done in that timeline if I have to all these gen eds and you know uh, prereqs and and major requirements and whatnot?" Um, we did. I did see in the slides a little bit about for the applied physics degree um, and then the engineering industry minor having an internship component. I believe. Um, are there are there any you know more unique internships that students have pursued over the last few years? Um, is that a is that a full on requirement or what might be the process where you all in and maybe the physics department are helping students find those internship opportunities? Um, can you guys touch on that a little bit? Uh, yeah, what, I'm thinking of some internships um, that weren't directly related to engineering and industry minor because these students were before the minor was created, which was relatively recently, but um, they had a student do an internship uh, at, uh, at NASA. Um, actually, uh, there's a couple of students who internships at NASA um, working on various projects. Uh, so... Um, so that's that, and then these students had just reached out to um, 
um, people they were interested in at NASA and said, hey, I'd love to be part of the internship program. And um, and then uh, uh, set that up with their mentor and then came to us and said, hey, what can we do to make this part of the program here at PLU? Absolutely. And we found a way to make it uh, um, part of the program, get some, get some credit for their work and the things that they're learning in their internships. Um, so those are the ones that stick out in my mind. Uh, Bogo, are there some that stick out in your mind? Yeah, that's the main one that sticks uh, in um, in my mind as well. Um, but in terms of help, I can say that we've had uh, different cases in which in some students have found internships entirely on their own in most cases. But we do have actually, um, a, you know, good size and growing network of alumni um who write to the department say hey our company has some internships this spring uh get your students to apply uh or those same alumni or different alumni could come and give a talk about their experiences how they find uh, found internships um uh, what to do what to write in a resume so we've had sessions like this uh, and as I said, we do have some network of alumni and that network is growing. So the department can do um, and will do its best to help students find internships. Now, in terms of the question, is the internship required to uh, finish the minor? The answer to this is no, it's not required. Uh, we would love students to have an internship because that's the best option for them. But if they cannot get internship because this depends on uh, on a lot of things, on personal circumstances, on good fortune, on the current state of the economy and a lot of things. And so because of that, uh, we have these other options, basically substitute the internship um, with coursework. And the idea here is that the internship uh, provides skills which are additional to the core, the specialty coursework in engineering or science. You know, it provides uh, some experience with business, some experience with um, working with others. And so we try in as much as possible to substitute this experience with coursework by asking students to take these courses in policy, ethics, uh, economics, et cetera. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you all. Um, well, as we get wrapped up here, if there are any other questions, again, feel free to drop those in the chat. Let's see. Um, what does the process of transferring to affiliated schools look like? Um, students applying for these institutions around the time, uh, I guess the, the timeline as well. So what does that process look like as they're trying to, to get into the next university? Okay, I, I can speak about, about our affiliate schools, which are Washington University in St. Louis and Columbia University in New York. So the applications happen in early spring. Um, this year, the deadlines vary a little bit from year to year. Uh, but for instance, this um, year, Columbia's deadline was 1st of February for applying and Washoe's deadline was 28th of February. So they're usually like this. Columbia is a little bit earlier than, than Washoe. And uh, the application process is very um, simplified and facilitated compared to the regular transfer application process. In fact, our affiliate schools don't like if we refer to our students as transfer students because that's that's a very different process. You know, it's uh, you know, can you imagine how hard it is to get into Columbia or Wash U after high school? it maybe it is 10 times harder to get into those two schools as a transfer student just because they have uh, that that m m many fewer spots for transfer students but for our students is like a totally different process they mm, basically they're considered not based on quotas and how many seats those schools have but they're basically considered almost already in if they have satisfied the requirements. So basically they're just evaluated on the basis of, okay, are have they satisfied the requirements, um, uh, basically taken all the required courses and passed them with grades, 
which have brought them higher than 3.3 GPA. Basically, that's that's the basis on which students are evaluated. And if they have met those uh, benchmarks, those requirements, uh, usually uh, they get accepted. As I said, in terms of the, the application, it's nothing like writing uh, many essays and things like that. It's basically you just uh, go through a list of courses and say which POU course corresponds to the required Columbia course, let's say in multivariable calculus and similarly for Wash U, then after um, you fill out that uh, course grid, as they say, Columbia has uh, two short essays, which are like 300 word essays, one of which says, well, why why Columbia? Why, why do I wanna go to study to Columbia? And the other is why study this particular kind of engineering, like Gru wants to study electrical engineering, why electrical, but not biomedical. And so the student has to make a case why they're interested in that particular specialty of engineering. So these are the two essays. Well, I would say short paragraphs that Columbia requires as part of the application. And they do give students to uh, share their special um, skills, hobbies, achievements of other kinds, but it is not like what they would have on a just regular freshman application on transfer student application. It's much more simplified and direct process. And WashU is even a little bit simpler than Columbia. A secret way to get into these institutions, quite honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's hard to get to, um, admitted to these programs um, directly at Columbia and uh, Washington University in St. Louis, but uh, through the PLU do degree program. Um, right, uh, like also, yeah, also I want to say some of these universities, they have, you have to get admitted into a major and certain majors are very competitive. Uh, to give an example, computer science. I mean, as hard as it is to get admitted, let's say, to Columbia University, maybe even harder to get admitted to computer science. And that goes for many universities. In our program, a student basically has to declare what they want. They are going to get admitted to that major if they get admitted. And if they have the right GPA and have taken the required courses, they will get admitted. And so uh, in more, you know, in any likelihood, and so that's that's another uh, asset uh, to, uh, of this program. Yeah. Uh, it does help out uh, clarify and not true transfer students, but like you said, almost a secret way to to get in if things go well in the classroom and, and that hard work gets, gets put in. Um, that's awesome and, and very informative, so thank you for that. Um, we just got a couple minutes here before we're wrapped up, so uh, if there are any last minute questions, again, feel free to drop those in the chat while we wait for any of those. Is there any last thing that any of you three would like to make sure our prospective students know um, one last, you know, little nugget they can walk away with um, regarding our program or, or kind of what makes it unique or anything along those lines? Yeah, when I think about the right program for somebody, um, it's really important to think about kind of what you uh want out of an institution and and your degree and the kind of student that you are um and so if you want a program where you can spend some time really getting to know your faculty and going to a small institution um uh to start with for those uh first three years to get those courses out of the way then PLU is great for that because it provides that strong liberal arts foundation the strong communication skills that we know that employers are, are really looking for um, now that's that is not for everybody, but I think it's for a lot, um, and I think that's a really uh, a good thing to know about the strengths of the of the PLU program. I appreciate that very much. Uh, I don't see any other last minute questions, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. But thank you to the three of you all. Um, for for popping in here and, and giving us some great information and, and to our attendees for participating. Hopefully you walked away with some awesome info um, and understand what your opportunities are here at PLU. And I know that all of us hope to see you here in the fall. Um, but we'll we'll wrap up here. So again, thank you all for, for, for participating. Um, and yeah, we will see you all around. Okay. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thanks, Pretty.
Wow. Thank you. Thank you.